And this is where the miners went down into the darkness in centuries past. As you can see, the entrances over time become unstable because the, the rock that was supporting the roof has been mined away and the corners of each one of these areas that they worked, rooms, they leave pillars and those pillars over time degrade and thin, a process we call necking. So the, the limestone miners took the wealth out of these mines and left a mine behind that had as little limestone left in it as possible so that they could maximise the amount of money that they got from the mine. Over the fullness of time it becomes unstable and we lose the mine altogether unless we take action. So what you see behind me is a little bit of a gentle engineering intervention to return this mine in the future to a future potential for geotourism. That's an ambition that we have here in Dudley. In the meantime, what happened to the limestone that came from these mines? Well, the majority of that limestone was mined between 1750 and 1927, when the last mine closed here. And in that period of time, the, the most important use for the lime that came out of these mines was in iron making. And in that process, limestone was put into a furnace with ironstone and coal, and the limestone acted as a flux. It lowered the melting point of the iron ore, but it also gathered up the impurities from the mix, in particular sulphur, which floated out then as a scum or a slag which was scraped away, and it left pure iron. So at the, the heart, the height, the very centre of the Industrial Revolution, limestone was in great demand. And so much so that taking limestone from these mines, dragging it to the surface, putting it on carts drawn by horses away to the local road network became inefficient, such was the demand. In that period you could perhaps put four or five tonnes of limestone on a cart drawn by four or five horses, and that would get, after a day or so, to a market maybe five or ten miles away. But in the late 1700s a much better system for transporting the limestone came into play, and that was the canal network. And in, seven, in the very late 1700s a canal was driven in 1798 through to 1805, a canal was driven beneath where we're standing now. In fact, 260 feet below us, or s roughly 70 metres below us, there is a canal tunnel which comes into these mines deep down. And that meant that miners could lower limestone down to the canal side, load it upon long boats in which they could get 30 or 40 tonnes of limestone, which could be floated by a single man's leg power to a canal network which could easily float it or be pulled by a single horse into a market as far away as Birmingham within a few hours. And so you could get much more material from the mines to the markets very quickly with the canal network. So that leaves below us now a series of underground galleries and also canal tunnels and underground canal basins where boats used to come, moor up in the darkness, load up and go away. And all of that is potentially a resource that can be used by the future. There are incredible human history resources here. And the limestone mining and the mines themselves are scheduled ancient monuments because they represent some of the best of the nation's mining heritage. But also there's a legacy here of the fossils that came from these mines. And that has a human story with it too. In particular, great scientists came to purchase fossils from the miners. And in so doing they built wonderful collections of fossils, the vestiges of ancient life on planet Earth. And here at Dudley, the rocks of Wren's Nest are a magnificent window, a truly incredible window of wonderful detail of those past worlds. More than 650 types of fossil on a large scale, I mean large fossils, are found in the rocks here at Wren's Nest, more than any other European site. The beauty of those things and the delicate preservation because of the fine-grained nature of the rock is exceptional. And we even here at Wren's Nest have soft tissue preservation, which is exceptionally rare. It's, it's 
the holy grail of geology to be able to see the soft tissues of animals that died millions of years ago. So that was all being found by the miners and offered up to the scientists. So much so that the Directory of Trades and Businesses in the town of Dudley in 1853 records no less than three fossil dealers in a town that was essentially ironmongery and cattle market of its day. So this was an incredible place of scientific discovery and a wonderful place of geotourism for those who would make their names by studying fossils. The miners too would supplement their incomes and we know from records held at the University of Birmingham that a miner may be paid as much as three weeks wages for one very good fossil Dudley bog or crinoid which is an exceptional amount of money for a miner who works 72 hours a week for a pittance that can barely feed his family. So there is a, a truly amazing human story here uh, that the rocks yield because of the work of local people. And our museum collections across the black country contain the best of what was found over those few hundred years when the mines were working.